do do you know what the current demographic is for comics? Very low. No, no I mean the current demographic. Thirty percent less than what it was. Sorry. No, I mean who, who's that? Who's actually buying the demographic for purchases? Do you know that? Because I know it was a few years ago. Not the same people. Though it's thirty percent lower than it was two years ago. Well, it was seventy-five percent male before. Yeah, with only with only about twenty-two uh, percent being female. Hmm. I don't know. I, I guess dogs make up the other percentage or whatever. But that was years ago. Uh, so I don't yeah. know if that's changed any. And so it feels like whenever they're shopping around these concepts and ideas, it feels like they really don't know their market. Yeah. And even Stan himself knew that comics was the predominantly male buy and was male buying those books. And although female okay. although females have, have gotten, you know, more interested and in I'm glad they did. I'm not saying that I don't want them to. I'm just saying that think about this make a movie for All right. I got something for you. Five. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, yeah, I've got something for you because I, I did the search. I went and went and asked, what's the comic book demographic is my question, right? Go for it. As you can see here. In the United States of America, 25% of comic readers are from the baby boomers age, whereas 6% of the readers are age 18 to 24, right? India, Thailand, yeah. and China are the top three countries with the highest number of comic book readers. Around 63% of the readers are male. Right. There you go. Yeah. So, if your audience, if your audience is of more than you know, sixty about sixty three percent male, shouldn't you be trying to write stories geared towards them? Right. No, we don't. We can't verify this information, but this is in July. Yeah, July this, this year. Stuff. So let's yeah. have a look. Yeah. So there's another. Let's go hey, down hey. to this one. Um, there's one right here. Sixty-three percent of comic book readers are white. So. Yeah. Here's one. So Marvel is a thing with only forty percent of the catch market. Here we go. Uh, yeah, baby boomer. This is from when? Perhaps today, what year? It doesn't give me the year. That must be the same one. So, right. So it breaks it down with a with a reader basis, twenty twenty three. So somebody last week, and I think it was thinking critical, and he you know he liked my post, comment on his thing, said that ah uh, you know, indie and he and he mentioned image is indie, and I said no, image is not indie comics. They're in the top three, in the top five. They're not image comics is not indie comics hasn't been forever. Oh, right. I agree you know? with you a hundred percent. You know, when and you're playing two, in this two, game, it's dishonest. Yeah. yeah, it's dishonest to say or disingenuous. Like maybe it's you know, to say images when you're referring to indie comics, you say I images in the comics. That is not correct. You no, know? That, that's not that is not correct. So yeah. you know, if you just look at the numbers hmm. and uh, uh what do we got? Twenty four point three. Yeah, so you got um, eleven percent. You know, almost twelve percent is image comics. Thirty-eight percent, forty percent they play right, and twenty-five percent, as they're trying to put, point out here, is DC, Marvel. So ninety percent of comic well, it's comic con as well thing. Okay, so here's what it is. Right now, when you say how many um, are reading, how many females are reading comics, you know it's not more than 50 percent it's not you know it's about 47 percent at the most but um so if that and that depends they're probably putting in children in there as well girls right when they say that uh and they're buying certain books but here's the thing as of 2023 comic comic book statistics state that the most selling uh, category in comics all graphic novels is manga was 53 percent of the market share right so in this demographic you'll find that there are more females than in comics 
And um, the reason for that is, is that, and I'll tell you why I think it is, my personal opinion, is because the characters are treated with respect. Each individual character has their own goal, their own thing, their own their own uh, story, their, you know, their own, um, how they relate to each other. They relate to each other as female, right? The female relates to the male as a female. The male relates to the ma female as a male. So there is no differentiating, oh, you know, this is this and this is this, you know, so the male doesn't have feminine energy or the female doesn't have masculine energy. And so women like that, as much as you like to say, you know, I mean, not you, but as much as the wokers like to say or the leftists like to say, and you know we're just putting them into a friggin you know basket and i don't want to do that but people are, you know who have those sort of leanings basically um they think one thing but the reality is the other thing i've never had someone go to me in a um in a, you know reading a manga from buying a manga from my comic book and go i like this because it does this right they just go, I love the story. Uh, and I had somebody actually give me money to buy a DVD of a of a, a manga that I didn't have any clue that was there. And she said, I can wait. Here's 45 bucks. I'm like, okay. Never heard of the thing. And so, you know, um, I found out really quickly owning a comic shop, what was selling to females and what was selling to males, right? And you you know, the problem here is that Marvel, DC don't care about the stores. We all know it's just about IP now and market share. So that 40% there, that 40% that up here, right, that's is a shelf space, right? It's the so I'm gonna, shelf space, don't you think? Go on. Can, can I talk about these numbers real quick? We're going to come Shelf space. So I'm gonna, uh, for those readers that are listening, let's talk about those numbers. Right here in this in this study, you're looking at 53% of the market being made of amount. Now, out of that 53%, 47% makes up the comics, the rest of the comics industry. Out of that 47%, 77% of that is the mainstream. Main. That includes image, meaning that only 23% of the half that you're looking at mm -hmm. is really. So let's cut those numbers all in half because this is a lie that we're waiting at it. Let's look at it from its true point. If we take the whole pie and let's look at that, right. you tell me if my math is wrong, right? From the whole pie, including manga, and we cut those numbers down in half Marvel Comics, DC, an image make up we said it was 77 percent of the market and only 23 percent is made up of the independent right so out of the total take going. of that mm -hmm. we get 11.5 percent is what the mm -hmm. independent market makes up out of the total whole because we're cutting that right number by half 11.5 percent right. is really all of the market share that independent creators get and then on top of that if you take that 77 and you divide that in half right we're looking at what 30 you know 30 uh uh 36 36 percent is made up by say, mainstream comics right out of the total but, they, but they're saying that 53 percent of all sales is manga so 47 percent is comics then that's right, right away yeah. that's right so exactly. that's what you're getting at, right yeah exactly. so out of the 47 percent sorry i think you're still having problems with your um your connection but uh so out of 43 percent right 20 out of the, it's like so if, if we're really talking about this the way it's got here so you'd say like out of 47 percent you're somewhere around about I don't know about twenty percent. It sells as Marvel, right? And then that will leave. And this is just—I'm not good at maths, but I'm just going to try to work out. So fifteen percent, right? According, just say um, 
is DC, and then 5% is image, right? And here's the thing. Um, today, there was a post by, uh, what was it yesterday? By um, Mark Miller, all right? Mark Miller has been trying to hard out trying to save the shops because he knows how important the shops are, and we know how important the shops are to get our indie comics out into the shops because you know we can sell online but actually having it there in the shops in front of everybody who you know the everyday average customer right is more important than just having it always on the shops it's like you want that 50 50. actually 30 70 because you know there's you get quick sales um if it's in the shops and you know but your comics have to look good but he, um but so he's been out there and he's um let me see if i can grab it uh, but he's been talking, trying to like say, look, there's a problem here. There's a real problem here, and they won't listen, and um, and they never will. Like they don't care. I think because they have their money, they don't need to care about, you know, um, they don't need to care about. Um, let me see. So care about the shops, right? Because they want streaming they're all in on streaming and streaming hasn't worked and it hasn't paid off so um he's he's mentioned about how the um the one of the most famous one of the most famous stores is closing down comic stores is closing down right and um where are we uh gosh i can't remember where it is but he's posted so much um let me see if i can get through thinking critical um give me one sec because it, it, he um can't remember his name now I was talking about it and um okay um here we go um yeah so it's all about how creators are shocked uh, shocked the industry um shocked comic creators shocked industry their brokers crashing right so um i'm just gonna play a bit of um i'm gonna play a bit of um gosh why can't i remember his name so i'm going to um let me see is that working better for you hawk yeah i'm 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 trying a little bit different oh that's good that one's good okay all right so yeah, let's do with that one so i'm just going to share uh gosh why well, can't I remember his name i really suck when i can't remember those names it's probably because it's too early but um so let's have a look so comic creators are worried fans aren't supporting creator owned work on the indie scene where's that says where's and others have warned for years that what would happen when they broke the comics industry. And now it's here. And the creative has no problem getting image, boom, IDW or Dark Horse. See, these people are not indie. Right? These here have, haven't been indie for years. They're the top five. The top three there, right? Uh, minus boom, right? And of course, IDW will be dead in a year because of the way they, they're losing millions every year. But like image, boom dark horse dc and marvel are the top five they're not indie they're the mainstream right so, so I agree with you 100 percent. and now I it's think, yeah i think the way of looking at that is completely foolish mm -hmm. we're talking they're making millions of dollars like yeah. you know an indie publisher once you get past a certain point there's got to be a hierarchy in this you can't just I'll, stay at the bottom forever you know yeah, you can't just, go ahead uh, uh, yeah, I'm no, talking, I just meant that there's got to be a way to climb up and and by the fact that image is never moving out of independent is total bs whoever's out yeah. there believing that i i'm i i challenge yeah. you you're so wrong they yeah. they make a lot of money independent they make are the, are the, go ahead TV. They make they make TV. TV. like i i don't know why anyone thinks they're independent they have yeah. a distribution it's, catalog that's huge so yeah. The, the independent guys are the guys that are very small companies, you yeah. know, that are trying to make 
uh, new content that are out there and they're trying to get your attention and trying to get your dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not telling you not to buy image boom or IDW or anything yeah. else. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're thinking about it is backwards. They oh, are us. not independent. They are, they are the, one of the, they're the, they are the, within the top 10 biggest creators in the comic industry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, I've been saying that for years, honestly, I've been saying it for five, what, since 2015 right when i had my shop it was like the five dc marvel image uh idw uh no not idw boom was coming up so idw because they had all the huge um you know mainstream comics uh like tnt uh teenage mutant ninja turtle transformers um all the right right and then you also had dark horse because dark horse had them you know a uh, conan predator all that stuff so you when you have that sort of stuff you can't really and you're doing deals with movies and stuff like that you and tv shows you can't you're not independent anymore it's like if i started going okay i'm you know i'm signing contracts and stuff like that and i'm getting a movie deals i'm not independent anymore i've moved up not there saying that you know i'm not still going to do independent stuff but it's just that whole thing because you're not earning the bigger bucks and it's yeah it's disingenuous to keep referring to those guys as independent it's it's disingenuous and actually disheartening to everybody else who's actually independent meaning like they're putting you know, they're getting something like that i guess like about uh what thirty thousand dollars on a like a couple hundred books you know whatever uh on kickstarter or something like that uh you know out of that they'll only get about 10 percent or 15 percent in the pocket so you got to think about it that way and i that's why i think it's disingenuous to keep referring to them and i and i put you know, I said to Wes, you know, I commented, I said, this is not right. You know, they're not independent. Referring to them as independent, as an indie, is wrong. So here's the thing, right? This is what I was talking about. Jim Hanley's store in New York is closing. Unthinkable news. And surely a God, surely to God, a wake-up call to the big two, Marvel, DC, and all the U.S. indie companies that added together are now 9% of the American domestic. So it's lower, right? So he's counted his, it's lower than 11%, I guess. but anyway so that's that's the that's my workings if 43 percent of 47 percent of all um, of all sequential art sales is the uh, you know comics which means 47 um, 53 percent is all manga the nine percent is the indies which means that let me see 49 so 10 uh, 15 percent something like about 25% would be, yeah, I think I worked out it was about 20% right, of all sales is actually Marvel, right? And 15% is DC and 9% is, yeah. Anyway, so how does this happen when the characters are more famous than ever? So JHU, right? Manhattan location. First off from Sunday to Wednesday, all back and all pre sales will be half price. There you go right i had to do that myself so i understand what it's like to have to sell everything to try to get rid of it because you're trying not to go bankrupt this is what happens all right i had to go through that in 2015 um as a shop as a comic shop owner so he goes yeah so from sunday to wednesday you've got to sell back issues all pre-2023 publication the um date whatever um Great paperbacks and hardcovers will be half price. Manhattan only. All right. Come and get you some, you know. And, you know, here we go. The usual suspects saying everything is fine. But look at the self space in Barnes and Novels. Talk to you, retail about cuts he's making. A strong Marvel and DC urgently required again for the health of the overall thing. All right. That's why we don't say we don't want them. We, we need them because they got to keep the shops open so we can get our comics in there so if we poo poo them too much not not because they're they're um they're, you know because they're big we poo pooing them it's because they're writing trash because the shops can't sell them you know so here we go so uh creators leaving co uh, leaving comics for tv and games price uh, price per issue as well now making it risky to experiment Issues are basically dead. It's all arcs. Online retail offers such such a better deal 
customers have to go there. Less comics for comics sake now. Okay. You have did a million units on his three part Joker series a number a couple of years back at a high price point. I think the market is there if the comics are good enough, right? Right. So the you know the big two ain't the big two anymore, right? But this is the delusion, right, of people that I really don't understand that you know Marvel and um, if, even if you have comic sales and manga sales, Marvel and DC still hold the shelf space. It's the shelf space, right? Um, here you go. So 79 percent manga. The most, the rest are mostly Dogman. I love Dogman. I love manga, but the complete. <laughs> um, this is Mark Miller for those who are listening uh, and are watching. But the complete collapse of the American in industry is as devastating as the collapse of the British industry in the 90s for hundreds and hundreds of American writers and artists, right? And of course, that was due to all these um, writers coming to America. So, yeah, um, Hawk. Uh, it's the writing's been on the wall for a while now in this this is nothing new but I, I i'm and and i think it's tragic that another store is closing you know and yeah, I, I, it's I wanna, horrible it's horrible it's it's you know because here's what people don't realize the total number of stores pre-covid before covid okay you know that it was only about uh, four thousand one hundred stores within the U.S. And the U.S. is for those of you listening overseas. The U.S. is a huge place. It is massive, massive. It is it is a long, long, long distance between Los Angeles and New York. It's yeah. huge. So a lot of people don't realize that, but there's a lot of little towns in between, and some of that. And and there was about forty one hundred stores going right. into COVID. The, you know, and, and I'm going to back up. Now that mm -hmm. is down from 7,000 stores prior to 20, uh, 2013. Over half of those stores closed before we got to COVID. And that's because of declining sales in the comic in industry. Mm -hmm. Then if you go into COVID, those stores mm -hmm. cut in half again. Coming out of COVID, there was only about 15, uh, 1,700 shops in the U.S., 1,700 down from 7,000. Okay. Within a 10 year period. Right. And that's because the comic industry, the readers weren't there to support the, the, you know, the content, right. but it also has to do with the shops as well. And I want to talk about this a little bit because I deal with this a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And this has to do with the mentality of the reader and the mm -hmm. mentality of the shop owner. And I, you know, and I, I, you know, we are in this together. We are all pulling the rope yep. down the same line. Okay. And, you know, we, we all want to get there together where everyone's going to be okay. Does that mean everyone's going to make it? Probably not. You know, we're going through a desert right now. We're probably not all going to make it, but yeah. we're going, we're going there together. And, um, my thought process is is that these shops they don't want to support indie they're yeah. they're they're part of the issue with this and the readers yeah. are part of the issue yeah and and i don't want to attack readers i love our no. readers i love the shops that work with us 1.21 gigawatts and and all-star comics yeah. all of those guys that we are so that have supported us um you know all about books and comics those guys have been really supporting us uh there but, and I was thinking about this the other day, and this really, this is what it has to do with. Some of these guys before didn't want to switch because Diamond took care of them. And yeah. my, my question to you, is Diamond still taking care of you? No. Hmm? you no. We saw what happened. No. We saw no. what, what terrible, terrible things happened under Diamond as soon as COVID hit, right? Diamond thought the world was going to stay the same forever, Right. And I've, I've, I'm, I've been in a situation myself, like where you think it's, it's going to be good, good, good. And somebody suddenly comes in and goes, they want to build their thing and take what you have built, right? So you've wasted all your you know, energy and time and money building your thing. And then somebody comes and takes your thing, right? You know, because they, they you know, they want what you, what you have. 
And so well, well, in, this case, in this case, in this case, right, had COVID. So wh what they could, so Diamond basically pulls up, goes, okay, no, nothing. We know what, and then also DC goes, pencils down, right? And so you had those two things basically, you know, on, and not only that, but going into it, like you mentioned, in 20, 2013, to 20 uh was it like 2020 right the seven year period there you had this person here right let me just put this up where is she this person here right attacking readers all day long right all day long that's why you have neon here going that's it the direct market's over right because that person there was attacking readers all day long and comic fans all day long and this one here heidi mcdonald same you know man so she's saying oh, it's manhattan rents right no you know what that could help pay the rent in manhattan the comics that sell right you know and it's so problem here is like here we go awful writing that's what i saw and i think you know you have two things awful writing and creatives attacking fans and this is the mainstream you don't see indie creatives attacking fans because indie creatives know that it's their bread and butter we work our asses off to get fans you know um and we appreciate them like you, right away you said we love our fans because we know that they're important to us no matter what and i think that's what they forgot right the mainstream dc marvel and some of the indie those so-called indies but they're not the indies like people at idw people at boom people at dark horse people at image forgot that it's the customer right and not i'm not saying all of them i'm saying some of them